Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. All right, let's transition to the court, and I think the way that this show, the rest of the show is going to kind of be set up is, is pretty simple. So I want to talk about one game specific, but it's not really a game as much as it is a trend, a thought, a take, an opinion, whatever. And then what I'll do is I'll take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk about the rest of the games from the weekend, because I do think there were some good games that are worth discussing that don't have to be, this is the biggest story ever. But I do think, like, Creighton beating Villanova matters. Kentucky maybe turning a corner against Auburn matters. UConn getting a win that they need against Xavier matters. Um, who else? Arkansas getting a win they need against Missouri matters. Tennessee, what is going on with them? So we'll talk about all those games after a break. But I do want to start, and I do want to talk about on the court with one game specifically, and that came on Sunday night, or Sunday afternoon really, at the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why I set that up as it was such a big deal, but uh, Michigan, the number three team in the country, goes to Wisconsin and beats the Wisconsin Badgers 67-59. And if it was just about Michigan beating Wisconsin, I probably wouldn't talk about it. Top five teams go to top 25 teams all the time and win on the road. That's what makes college basketball so great, and it's especially not a big deal in a year like this with COVID, with all that kind of stuff. But why I want to talk about it is because I think there's a bigger story and it represents something bigger and the context behind the game matters. And the context to that story is very simply this. This was not just another top five team beating a top 25 team. This was a top five team that had been on a COVID pause for close to a month and had not practiced for close to three weeks and they went on the road and beat Wisconsin. And what that says to me is Michigan is so much better than anybody gives them credit for. And also, in a year where we have talked almost exclusively, Gonzaga and Baylor, Baylor and Gonzaga, it's one or the other. You can only have one. Everybody else is playing for third place behind Baylor and Gonzaga, Gonzaga and Baylor. I think the Michigan Wolverines are a team that can not only win a national championship, but are uniquely built to beat each of those teams. And on the right night, under the right circumstances, I think they could beat either one or maybe both and be your national championship champion at the end of the year. First off, for people who uh, don't really know the backstory on Michigan, it's kind of crazy. Because not only were they on a one-month COVID pause, they were on a one-month COVID pause without a single player testing positive. For people who do not remember... After their January 22nd game at Purdue, another tournament team that they just beat the crap out of on the road, they find out that that new strain of COVID is on the campus at Michigan. The new strain from the UK, which is supposedly more contagious, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to get into COVID stuff on this show. I've done enough of that over the last year. But the university decided that because of the new strain being on campus, all of the athletic department had to be shut down. And the state health department jumped in and said all of the athletic department had to be shut down. And so Michigan, in the middle of a largely historic year, now I know Michigan has had a ton of success, multiple Final Fours in the last decade, multiple Final Fours dating back to the Fab Five era. It's not as though Michigan is some plucky ups. They're not Drake or Loyola Chicago, but they're in the middle of a pretty incredible season. So imagine having to shut down without a single positive test, without any way to get back on the court, and you do it, and you come back, and you have a game like this. And so on the one hand, I just want to give Michigan credit, frankly give everyone in college sports credit, because it has not been an easy year, not just for top five basketball teams, but for football teams, baseball teams, tennis, golf, all the sports that play in the fall, all the sports that are going to play in the spring. It hasn't been easy. So let's give everybody credit here. But I also want to give Michigan credit for doing what they did, having to take a break, and coming back and playing the way that they did in Wisconsin on Sunday, falling down by 14 points, and then coming back and getting a win in a game where, frankly, they didn't even play that well. And that's what, when I look at Michigan, stands out to me. First of all, an incredible job by Juwan Howard assembling this roster. I've mentioned it on previous shows, but 
in a year where we all just say like, oh, you have to have continuity from this year to last year to be a national championship contender, Michigan really isn't that. They're not Virginia, Villanova, Baylor, Gonzaga that basically returned their team intact from last year. Instead, they have some key players, but they also lost some key players. I mentioned it on a previous show, but Xavier Simpson is one of the best point guards in the history of the program. He graduated last year. John Teske was a double-double machine down low. He graduated last year. And in their place was a collection of transfers, freshmen, and a couple of returnees. I'm not going to say that it's a completely new roster, but you have a transfer point guard named Mike Smith from Columbia. You have a freshman center named Hunter Dickinson, who uh, was a McDonald's All-American caliber player last year. You have another transfer from Wake Forest. You have some key returnees. And just credit to Juwan Howard for meshing all of these guys together on short notice with a weird offseason. Uh, it's funny, right? We, we, we hear from Coach K and John Calipari and Roy Williams, and I think they're all right, by the way, about how tough this offseason was not having a normal offseason. Juwan Howard largely dealt with all the same stuff and has his team in position to compete for a national championship. I would also add, by the way, shout out to Juwan Howard. I was thinking about this after the game on Sunday. Never forget that Michigan was considered one of the quote-unquote big losers of the offseason because their two top recruits, one, Isaiah Todd, who actually committed and signed with the school, ended up going to the G League. Josh Christopher was supposed to go to Michigan. He ends up going to Arizona State. And so Michigan was the big loser in the summer. Look at how good they are now. So, so I, I'm getting off topic here, but what I am saying is the way that Juwan Howard has built this roster and the way he's done it in this season is absolutely incredible. But as I look at the 30,000-foot view of college basketball, I think this is a team that is not only can make a deep tournament run, but is uniquely built to beat the best teams in college basketball, to beat Baylor, to beat Gonzaga. And here's why. When you think about Baylor, you think about Gonzaga, what are the things that they do well? We all know, right? They have great guard play. They don't turn the ball over. They shoot the three-point shot well. They score a lot of points. Baylor is a really good defensive team. Gonzaga not as much, but Gonzaga scores the ball so easily, I'm not sure it matters. And as I talk to people across college basketball, like the one thing that, that you know, I kind of keep asking people, well, how do you beat them? How do you beat them? How do you beat them? There's two ways. You have to have length on the perimeter to shut down those guards, can defend those guards on the perimeter, don't let them go crazy on you. You got to have size down low and athleticism down low because you have to have guys that can control the boards, that don't give up second chance opportunities because Gonzaga and Baylor will kill you. You give them two, three chances, they're not missing a second shot. And so when I look at Michigan, the two things that they have in abundance, they have big wings on the perimeter that can defend, and they control the boards. In terms of the boards, they're number three in the country in defensive rebounds in terms of grabbing rebounds on the defensive end. They do not give up second chances out of 300 whatever teams. They are number three in the country. And then you look at them on the wing. They got four guys who are all big, athletic, physical, tough, can guard. Got a kid named Franz Wagner, whose older brother Mo Wagner played for the team now in the NBA. Chani Brown, who was at Wake Forest last year, one of those transfers that I mentioned. Brandon Johns, Isaiah Livers, who are both back next year, back, back from last year. And so when I look at this team, that is what I see. I see a team that takes care of the ball, good point guard play. Mike Smith, the point guard, is really good. A lot of assists, not a lot of turnovers. They shoot the ball well, but they also defend the three, rebound the ball really, really, really well. And so when I look at the big picture of this season, I'm just telling you right now, I have planted my flag. It is February 15th when you're listening, maybe February 16th, maybe February 14th, depending on where you are. But Michigan is a team that because of how they're built, if they don't, if they get the chance to play Gonzaga or Baylor, not saying they'll definitively win, but I think they're uniquely built to beat them. All right. Long, fun episode of the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast so far. Uh, before uh, I'm going to take a quick break. I do want to get to some other games from the weekend, but in the process of doing that, I want to take a quick break. You guys catch your breath. I'll catch my breath. I'm going to come back, talk a little Villanova Creighton, talk a little Yukon Xavier, talk a little Kentucky Auburn, talk a little Arkansas beating Missouri, maybe a little Tennessee. I'm going to take a quick break, but I will be back here momentarily. 